History for Fools. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, History for Fools podcast. What's up? Hey, or the way this fool says it in the Bay, the HFF. HFF, baby. History when for Fools. When you said HFF the first time, honestly, bro, I, I, I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about, dog. I but I went to, along, bro, because I love you. I tried to blend it in. But I went along, bro. I love you, bro. Thank you, bro. I love you, too, bro. But I was going to say, bro. Um, I appreciate you tolerating I, 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 me. I was like, <laughs> he- I thought you were doing hefty, 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 bro. You know, when me and Lisa talk, we say HFF. Well, when you said HFF? Yeah. I was like, um, Hall of Fame? What? I didn't put the history you didn't put it together. You no. I Because me and her, when we email each other about stuff, it's... Um, we just put HFF. So I was like, that's actually like a quicker way to say it so we could get through. You know, that's like, true. That's long. I just say History for Fools probably like five times if I didn't do the HFF. History for Fools podcast with Butch Escobar and myself, Felipe Esparza. Um, look, man, we have a new background. Mine is the little cookie right here. Yeah. And this remote control for the for the timer. And uh, look, this right here, it's, it's a... This is a uh, cookie? This is a... Um, this is a projector for a for a eight millimeter film. Back in the days, they, they would sell eight millimeter cameras, like a little. But it was was which was the camcorder of its time. Yeah, man, you. Wow, this is cool. So the, it was a cam. I like this thing. Eight millimeter camera was the eight. It was the or it was the camcorder of its time. So that you would do home movies. Was that camera, and later on when they develop them, you will put them, you will put the reel right here, and put the strip down through here through this little camera right here, put the strip, lock it in, turn on the light, turn on the light, and then on your screen, it starts That's playing. Dope. It's clean too, man. Yeah, man. I like, was. Look at the lines on this. Yeah, it's perfect. It, it came with a case. It's very like so you close it when you fancy looking. Too. When you want to close it, you close it up, and you there's a case somewhere. You close it up and you take it back with you. And right here, man, is a timer. You know, like um cassette player, the little timer, light. It's where it lights up. This thing actually heats up because there's a light that flashes, and this thing comes out, and then the film plays. Does it have like a cooling fan in it and everything? I think so. That's pretty dope. Guess how much I paid for it? I bought it at a yard sale. Two hundred bucks. Three hundred. I went bucks. to a vintage. I was doing a show in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, at a at a college, and when a guy, I went, the, the guys took me to go eat lunch, and I went to a vintage store in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I saw this there, and I asked that lady how much. She said seventy bucks for everything. Seventy bucks. So I took the eight millimeter camera, which I have at home, and um, and this right here, I carried it into the airport, into the plane. Look, boom! Oh my god! And dude, it was I put it under my seat. It fit under the seat, and it was seventy bucks. Good you deal, right? It, f- wow, you brought it all the way on a plane too. That's a fucking heavy ass thing too. Yeah. It's not a light. It's not a light. Uh... I carried it with me the whole time, and they they let me through. The, I don't know if they they would. I don't know. It was it was after. Of course, it was after two eleven because I did that show in two thousand thirteen. Yeah, man. So now it's just. I know it works. I have the plug, and but I don't turn it on. It's funny. This it came with a case. There's another part of this. I'd be afraid to turn it on. To be There's another with you. part like this. A cover. A cover. Yeah. Look at the backside. Can you turn it around again? Look at that. That cool. So like. This, oh yeah. That's the. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. This, the other uh, side is unlocks. There's a screw that goes yeah. on that side, and it comes off. To like so it came it out, with the probably. front part. You close it like that, and then... Um, the cap goes over it. Then It has a little canvas hard cap, bro. Oh, that stabilizers. To make it higher, yeah. Okay, all right. And then to focus right here, bro. So I think this, this, this little lens alone is expensive, bro, right now. Look it up. How much does this cost right now on I'll Amazon? Look, I'll, look, I'll tell you right now. Um, do you know the brand name of it? Bullock. Right there. Right there, bro. Bullock 18. Bullock 18 proje- projector. Movie projector. What you looking at? Bullock 18. 
Five L. Bullet. Eighteen. Five L projector. Um, what did you say? Yeah, that's what I'm looking at too. I'm there it is. It depends on what model, like probably, and all that stuff, huh? There wow. it is, man. People are out there buying watches, buying stuff that devalues. I went over there, spent seventy dollars on this. Now it's worth seven hundred dollars, but it's not for sale unless you want it that bad. I'll sign it for you, and you give me a price, and you send me the money to ship it to you because it's just expensive. It's just ex I think it costs more to ship than this thing is worth, huh? Probably, bro. That thing's heavy as fuck. So if you're in the Los Angeles area, <laughs> imagine, man. No, just imagine this, okay? You're a single man. You want to get sexually aroused. You want to watch a porno back in the days when this shit was around, right? So this is what you have to do, man. You would have to find a dark room in your house, put a a sheet up on on the on, on the wall with no cum stains. Turn this motherfucker on like with this. No cum stains. Turn this motherfucker on like this. Press play, and just go at it and then pause and shit. You hear your wife? <laughs> Nothing. Sir, your fan was on all night. Oh, that was my movie. <laughs> Who are those screams coming from your house? I heard that the bulbs. The only thing you have to replace on it was that bulb. The bulb goes, yeah. probably burns the fuck out of it. But that's how it was, man, to watch a porno back in the days. You would have to have one of these. So we should uh, try to get this running and then do a video about that. Yeah, and a lot of the home movies, that like you see those home movies, like the, that in, um, like in that movie, um, uh, that, that movie um, Christmas Vacation, when Chevy Chase gets stuck in that closet, He's watching a, a film about the old days, and it has no sound. That's an eight millimeter camera, by the way, because it's eight millimeters. It's like this, and sixteen millimeter, of course, is the, they make films. Thirty-five millimeter, what they do now, but this is eight millimeter. But so the, this is the, the this is the same one that um, Chevy Chase had when he was stuck in a closet on Christmas vacation. Uh, Philip will show you the video, and it starts playing. Christmas is the time of year. <laughs> what a love! And, it, and this is this black and white, so yeah. That's um. Is this go. the only one you have that's like this? I noticed because you have other things in your office. I only have this one as far as the camera. Okay, but you have like a. I know that I saw like a transistor radio in there. That's like from the old days. Yeah. Um, and then a desk like a like a probably like a like a nightstand or like an alarm clock. Yeah. A zenith that's in there. Yeah, that's an that's an alarm clock right there. Um, it's real old. Like it has a, it's an old ass speaker. It's weird. It looks like a the turbo. speaker right on yeah, top. It looks like a, a jet engine. Yeah. at the top, it's really interesting. That the what's well, you turn that shit on, bro? It'll probably turn this whole building off. Oh, really, bro? That, it that just shit draws power. That, that has a cloth cord. Does it have those like bulbs in it that like bro, light up? That bulb is big, bro. Yeah, like like uh, it's big and. The rest of the cord is cloth. Okay. So you know that shit will catch on right. fire back in the day. Do you remember when we were doing the comedy, history of comedy, um, and uh, they talked about how um, uh, when the radios first came out, a few houses had been burnt down because of the bulbs, and then they started, and then the theater company that, run, that ran vaudeville started spreading propaganda that GE, General Electric uh, radios were burning houses down. And you would have to get like a pan underneath because like in case sh 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 burning shit dropped out and stuff like that. So I I, I, I just wonder like uh, some of these things like do draw a lot of electricity. For real, man. Nice. Is that you close the door, please? Yeah, we started. You. You're not going to talk about dicks. Fuck yeah. And pussies. Um, you know. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> dicks and pussy, dicks and pussy. <laughs> you know what I always wanted to learn, bro, or dug, um, dig into? Because um, maybe one day I just, I'll just dig into it and come back and talk about it, all I know about it. When I was a kid, because we live in California, and this is, it's going to be like stupid, right? Because I was like, when I, where, where were we last? Um, we were in his, um, uh, we did Isleta, or no, San Jacinto, and then before that we did Isleta, right? In Albuquerque. Yeah, we did Albuquerque and Isleta. Yeah. And um, I was talking to somebody that's, I don't know, they're from Chicago, or they're from Albuquerque, and or they're from, I don't know where the hell they're from, right? But I was talking about how when I go there, I'm, I know that I'm going to go see this and I'm going to go see that because I always wanted to see that. And that person said, <laughs> he made me laugh. We were in the airport talking. He said, that's funny, man. I'm from there. I didn't know those things were there. <laughs> And I, and I don't want to fucking go if you're going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, like he said, he pretty much, he, so sadly, they, they're like, this will be all tourists. I don't want to go. But he said, he's from that town, never been there. Oh, really? Never, never heard of it. And, and uh, then we both laugh because you're right, bro. I'm from California. Ask me how many times I've been to Magic Mountain in the last fucking decade how many times you got up to like the observatory the observatory i used to go there a lot but nine nine a long time oh okay but the six flight magic mountain i haven't been there in zero time bro and i probably can't even zip that right up anyways i've never been to magic mountain disneyland i've only been there since i've known lisa maybe once bro so i haven't really? been there in over a decade philip when the last time you went to disneyland so you've been there longer than me. I never went to Disneyland till I met my ex-girlfriend, and then we went more times than I can even count. <laughs> but that made me laugh. But when I was a kid, uh, I guess we had a family member that lived in Santa Paula, California, so they were closer to to Magic Mountain, and they went all the time. So we ended, we went with them to to Six Flags, and then my we went with my mom and dad to Six Flags. Uh, I went to Six Flags when I was in summer camp. I went to Six Flags when I was a camp counselor. I went to, I went to Six Flags a lot when I was little, What's bro. What's fun in Six Flags or Disneyland? Six Flags. Really? Six Disney for whips. Yeah, okay. Well, now, you know, I guess if you want the hardcore rides, the rides where you might die in that redneck <laughs> is a mega guy. He right. wants to kill a bunch of Mexicans in one ride. <laughs> That's one thing about Mexicans, man. This you, you could put this on TikTok. Um History for Fools podcast. Clip now. Um one thing about um people that say, Oh man, I don't like him because he's a MAGA supporter. I don't like him because He's a Brandon supporter. Right. I don't like this guy because he likes Biden. I don't like this guy because of this. But in the end, of, in the end of the day, we, we all have to live together. Right. We all have to get along, man. Like, how are you gonna not like a guy that wears a MAGA hat when that guy's in charge of running the fucking um, log jammer at Knoxbury Farm? You know, he's the guy in charge of pressing the button at Colossus. You better be nice to that motherfucker. You gotta be nice to these people, man. You know. Just like he, like he, one day, he might not like you know um, immigrants, but one day, man, he's gonna be broken down in the road one day, and who's gonna be strolling in and in from Mexico <laughs> with fucking mechanic skills? Yeah, he's got. He might get. He might have to move to Mexico to avoid getting arrested. You're gonna have to get along, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Cause I, I thought your problem, man. Oh, man, I'll, I'll never hang around with a guy that wears a MAGA hat. Or I'll never a guy that wears a number twenty four hat, but these people are the people that are doing the jobs that a lot of these um, immigrants are not getting. Like 
first of all, man, when it comes to carnival workers, I don't see a lot of immigrants over there. I never see bikes running those. elephants. Yeah, no. Yeah, I don't see Mexicans at all at those. Oh, or or dog fighting. Right. Cock fighting, you might see a couple of paisas and a couple of Cubans with guayaberas, but that's it. Eh? <laughs> dog fighting, yeah, I don't, yeah, we don't, we don't dog fight, right? When I was in, um, maybe in Mexico they dog. Fight. When I was in um, Midland, Texas, Odessa, I was doing a comedy show, and I was, I was, I was annihilated, bro, and took a shower, bro, like a, a long shower. I decided to. I decided after my shower that I've been up for an hour and did not want to start this day yet. And I went back to sleep. Then I get a call from the owner of the comedy club. Hey man, uh, you want to go down to the fights? And I said, fights. It's early. Yeah, man, we have fights all the time. And I thought it'd be like you know, like, like boxing. one of those fights, you know, like in. Um, Desperado, where the fools are fighting in a oh, barn. Oh yeah, or like what's that one with Brad Pitt? They're fighting in a barn, you know, like yeah, fucking yeah, like, yeah. like um, lock, stock, and two smoking, like Kimbo Whoa. Slice, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I yeah. thought it'd be one of those fights. And I said, "No, nah, I'm good, man. You sure? Yeah, man. One of my dogs is there fighting. Oh yeah, your homie's fighting. No, my dog. Oh no. So, so you blame me for dog fights? I'm good, bro. Yeah, man, I got four thousand dollars on him right Fuck now. Fuck you, bro. Fuck you. So it was a dog. Oh wow. He put him into a fucking dog fight, bro. How how did you? Cause I know how much you love dogs. I was a vegan then, bro. Oh okay. Oh, that's you were like loaded. But like, I, I, but before. I wasn't gonna load it either. But um, but it didn't hit me later on that on the way back. Oh yeah, this was that dog fights. Right. They were gonna dog fights. Yeah, I'd have been like, yeah, come pick me up. Me and my fucking shotgun, you fucking Yeah, and uh, we went, they ended up catching, they, they, up. They, they ended up, they, they ended up taking a guy to federal prison for other stuff. Good. But, I remember that the, oh. the show was empty, man, the show was empty, bro, like, Friday, Saturday, I was there Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, and there was like at least... Thirty people every night, forty people every night, forty people, bro. Out of that place, that two fifty. Oh shit! He was looked- giving me eight hundred dollar for the whole week. He was getting that from the dog thing. No, man. Um, he was the dog thing was a, a hobby, bro. That's nothing. What was it, dude? I don't. I, but there, there was a big comedy club, right? And um, and John, the, the comedian, and it was John Roman. He was like the bar. He was the manager there. He was the one that booked me. And and there was a bartender. So Diego goes, check out the bartender, right? She has big titties. <laughs> and he already fucked it up for me, bro, because I first time I met her, that's all I, I can remember. Check out her big titties. Her, her, her biker is a stupid guy. And I met the biker. He was a stupid eh? <clears throat> But there was another people I met there. There was a guy, bro. There was a comedian going up on stage, and this, this redneck guy was heckling the whole night and getting laughs with his friends. And um, I told that comedian, John Roman, I said, bro, when you go up on stage, you you roast that motherfucker with these three jokes. You're going to fuck him up. And I said, because I feel had a mother like, <coughs> like a wrestler, right, all blonde and dirty, you know, a big dude. He goes, man, man, you're like Hulk, you're like Hulk Hogan, man. If he didn't decide to wrestle, man, if he if he didn't decide to wrestle, if he if he never wrestled, everybody laugh. Ah, yeah, yeah, man, you lost the WrestleMania of life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, this is a loser leave town night, bro. You gotta go. <laughs> did he did he do him? And he roasted him. Destroyed. Destroyed with it. Destroyed. Yeah, funny, with those dude. three jokes on that dude, bro. Hell yeah, that shit was funny, bro. When he, because the way he said it, because he he wore glasses, he looked like he looked like that cartoon Dilbert. Oh, okay, yeah. 
So it came, it, it didn't come out as aggressive. It's like a big no neck motherfucker. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't come out as a. If we should drive the little train, bro, at the mall. Yeah. So that fool said, bro, you know, like Hulk Hogan, man. If he was like just, if he never, if, if he never wrestled, bro, like, and decided to be a crackhead or what, a meth head. Yeah, bro, you left the whole the WrestleMania of life. <laughs> ah, all his friends, bro, they started going like this to him. Was this in Texas? Yeah, in Odessa. <laughs> in that Odessa. same that same bar with a guy, but they were, his friend was slapping him like Ronnie Rose, bro. That's fucking hilarious, dude. He goes, yeah, bro, this is a loser. Leave town night, bro. You gotta go home. Nice. And then his girlfriend with a girl, her name is Stephanie. And then she told me she lives in a town where the as soon as you go into her little town in Texas, it says "Welcome to Clan Town." Wow. What city is that? Or what? Do you know the name of the city? No, it's really called Clan Town. Look it up for the thing with a with a C, Clan Town, Texas. Wow. I wonder if that still exists, dude. That's Anyways. the thing that's crazy to me. So, Clanton. Clanton. Okay. But they call it Clantown. But they, they said, she told me they took the W out later on. The progressives. Clantown. <gasps> yeah. Whoa. In fact, they're about Dessa, right? Yeah. That's where she's from. And that's where um, Hollywood Hulk Hogan is from, right? Okay. And um, Hollywood Hulk Hogan ended up being a real, real cool guy, bro. Um, the, 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 he's a friend. He was a friend of the owner of the club. You mean the guy that he was making fun of? Yeah. yeah okay. We didn't know that at the time. Right. All his friends came to the show. But the, but they got roasted, bro. And that, that guy ended up being a real nice guy. When we were partying and blazing at the house, he, he asked me, uh, how many shirts do you have left? And I said, I don't know. That box. How many in there? 30. I'll buy them all right now. And he gave me right there $600 for $20 each. And he bought them all. And he opened it up. And he gave everybody a t shirt in a, in that, at that party. Everybody in the house. Wow. Had a shirt, bro. It was my old shirt from 2005 photo. But no, there might be a photo somewhere in the internet of me um, with a bunch of people, and we're all holding assault weapons. Anyway, oh. we're all holding assault weapons in that photo. They're all wearing my T-shirt. Anyway, Philip, and if you see that photo right now, everybody in that photo except me and maybe three other people in that photo did not go to prison when they raided that place. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Everybody, even Hollywood Hulk Hogan, and oh, um, not Hogan, dude. Everybody, but anyway, this, this is the fucking Hulkamania guy, right? How 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 rad is it though when that happens? And like, what? Like you weren't headlining that night, were you headlining? Oh yeah. Were you like it was before last comic standing? Or Way after? before two thousand six. So, so you struggling? This is when you're struggling. Yeah. Okay. How fucking rad is that? When you're like, shit, I'm going to barely make this check. And if I get paid for this night, I'll make it to the end yeah, of the week. Uh, but I don't know what's going to happen. That guy, the, that. O- the owner. Somebody comes in and is like, here's all this money. For the this. owner, man, he was a cool guy, bro. Like, he 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 um, he um, paid all the comics. I mean, there could be 12 people there. There could be 13 people on the show. As long as he did the, uh, the whole hour, he didn't care. Because one time he put me to the side. When he paid me, he had like a big uh, whop of cash, like, that that was, that was just his um his everyday money, and um he just gave me um eight hundred, he didn't give me eight hundred, and he and then I when I missed my flight he gave me another one fifty, and um he bought he bought me fucking cheeseburgers as much cheeseburgers I wanted every day, and you look cool dude, but that fool said this bro, he said, I know it's empty, but I'm gonna pay you your whole money. He goes, because I thought he said, I had a great time. He I'm, enjoyed it. I had a great time. I saw your whole, I saw every show you did. I watched every comedian, all the shows. You know, some of them, we want to party. They want to hang out, hang out. You know, we have a good time, man. And and I'm building something here. You know, maybe it will be me. It'll be somebody else. 
there'll be a comedy scene, there'll be more rooms, and and people look back and say, hey, it was Big Mike who started the comedy scene. He did. You know, leave something behind. You know, he, something like a, a leg. He wanted to say that at least people look back and say, they remember. he wants to be remembered at Big Mike, the guy who started comedy, not Big Mike, the guy that was the biggest drug dealer in Odessa. We did Odessa Midland this year, Midland Odessa last year, last year, and it was sold out, and that theater was enormous, like, and it was beautiful. Yeah. And it, it's a trip hearing you tell this story. I invited her, I invited that guy's sister to the show all oh, the time, did. always do. It's a trip to hear this story, you know, and I've known you a long time, I don't know if I knew you at that <laughs> time, but I've known you a long time, um, but I didn't start hanging out with you doing shows until like a couple years ago and it's really interesting to hear these stories and then go to a place like that and see where you're at and it's it's amazing to see like there was nobody doing theaters at that place before right we, there, we, there was no scene right nobody was going in like now you can see that at least a bunch of comedians are coming that in theater has to, comics all the time when we were there yeah we were seeing but that was next. before it was just a little comedy club but this is i'm not done with a story bro Remember that comedian Fly? Yeah. So, like, uh, fucking um, Hollywood Hogan, bro, he telling me the story. He said that Fly came in, right? And he started doing these jokes, right? Like, you know, how he, I'm the one that hooked him up with that gig. He said that he started doing these bits about white people that were hardcore, not funny. Oh, yeah. He said that the next day, fucking... Um, Hollywood Hogan showed up with clan hood. No way. Oh <laughs> my God, bro. If you guys know who Fly is, dude, it makes his story if you so guys ever much see fucking funnier. St- comedian dude. Stephen Fly asked him what happened oh, at Odessa. Oh my, because he has been pretty he, he, annoyed, by stuff. he annoyed the audience or him so much that the, that guy showed up the next day and he wore, you know, you wear the KKK outfit, the whole hood. Yeah. But he he just wore the he sat in the, he sat in the middle, bro, and he, and in the middle of the act, he put on the hood. <laughs> like instead I'm of find Waldo, find the wizard. Dude, that's crazy. What did Fly do? He goes, man, y'all see that ghost? <laughs> it's not a ghost. I don't know what he did, dog, yeah. but I know. That uh, he was thrown off. He had to have taken been. off a bit. And, but like, I guess later on, he found, oh, the joke's on you now. Right. Because he ended up going to the, he, he ended up partying with them too. Right. Those dudes, like, those dudes are nice, bro. They, like, do, they do something heinous but during that's the show. Stupid, and then they, right? They're really nice afterwards. And then, bro, his lady. I get it. It's a great her, gimmick. Her lady, his lady, would drop her phone all the time, bro. And then you, you hear it go, Clack, right? Right. And then she'll say, nah, it ain't going to break. It's a NASCAR phone. It's a NASCAR phone. Because she had a, a, a NASCAR case. Right. So we throw it in this shit, bro. <laughs> it's a NASCAR. That shit can blow up. It'll still run a race. <laughs> I love people out in the middle of nowhere, dude. This is great. I love shit like that. That's funny. Yeah, man. It's funny, man. Because um, cause sometimes... Oh, uh, full um, uh, that fool um, he like who who, who does who's gonna pick us up from the airport? Oh, right here, man, my homie, right here, and this fool uh, it's a redneck dude missing a little missing a hand, bro. <laughs> oh, he went to jail too with no hand, bro. With no hand, how they cuff that guy? Like, but with like one hand in his belt. The guy that I gave the three jokes to, right? Um. When he ended up, he he went to prison too because he went to prison. Somebody too? convinced him to get, take the bar under his name. Oh, so that guy was a local guy. Yeah, the comedian. Yeah, they told him, bro. Oh they, no, hey, man, I'm a, man, hey, man, you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a put the, you, you want to put the bar in your name and I pay you such and such. He goes, sure, you know, you're a struggling comedian. I'm, a, I'm the owner of a bar. Yeah. So he be, he became part owner of the of the bar. I've definitely been that stupid where you could have probably got convinced me so to own your he bar. Just just for signing that paper, he went to jail too. Damn. And and big boobs. That's federal shit. Big huh? boobs. She went to prison too, bro. But she was embezzling from her job, not the, not 
Nothing in the house. Something on the side. Some shit she was pulling on the side that they didn't know was happening. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. Love to see it. Hollywood Hogan? Yeah. What happened to Hollywood Hogan? Bro, he's he's fucking he's fucking doing the leg drag on people yeah. bro, in prison too. <laughs> he slipped further and further down. They took the everybody, bro. They took everybody. He grew man boobs and he's getting dicked down like that homie in the last episode. He, he took everybody down, man. <laughs> They all went to prison. Um, and it's funny, man. Um, there's a big... Th- I, I remember doing a promo video in that guy's ranch. Yeah. And I said... And, 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 I, said, and I remember walking around with a fucking uh, a rifle. All right, man. I'm going to see you guys this week <laughs> in Odessa, Texas. And we're going to hunt down terrorists. And I had one of the guys look like a terrorist. Get the fuck out of here, bro. And I pointed at the guy... <laughs> <laughs> like I, like I, like I, like I had this guy just look like a terrorist in the bar. Yeah, like a little, like, like a I was gonna, like I was gonna shoot, kill him in the bar. <laughs> Dude, I love when they get like. Did they ask you to do that, or did you come up? With I that did yourself? it with the ranch, yeah. Because I love sometimes. When I they, did that instead of going to a dog fight. I'll, I'll watch people do it to you. I've watched people do it to you as long as I've known you, and I and I've I've had it happen to me a couple times where someone will go. Like the club owner will go, hey, can you run a promo with me real quick? And they make you do some weird commercial for them somewhere. Bro, it's so funny, dude. When I was talking to a sister back in the days when everything went down, I asked her, so what happened to his ex or his his ex or his girlfriend, that crazy girl? Because he had a crazy ex, bro. She was kind of like, Phew. just like the NASCAR girl up, up there, you know? Right. He goes, man, first she freaked out because she's the only one that didn't go to prison. Right. She freaked out. Then she t- she she got she she got really hooked on drugs, really 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 bad. She had nowhere to go. And the final, the last time I saw her, my mom was letting her live in a chicken coop. I'm going to say that one more time. If you laugh, I'm going to cluck out of here. I'm so fucking happy I was raised by good people. (laughs) Right? Holy shit. She's an adult, bro. Dude. (laughs) Dude, sometimes I go, did I do the right thing getting into comedy and fucking making all these fucking, like, am I making bad decisions? No. I'm not living in a chicken. I'm not having my parents let me stay in their chicken. No, her mother, -mother (laughs) ex-mother-in-law. Ex mother in law. That's wild. God, I love you, Texas. That's and then, dude, um, these, are, and, these and, stories and, and, come from Texas. And then um, I'm think. And then when she when she was telling me this, I said, um, "Your mom, your mom is really nice, you know, to let her ex girlfriend sleep in a chicken coop. Because <laughs> she 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 could have been like her real mom and threw her out in the streets. But you guys, <laughs> but you guys like got her living like oh." Like Little Miss Muffet over there. I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather my mom just be like, go to the streets. To be like, you can take the chicken coop. Like, <laughs> but now think about it, bro. Think about it. You're right. Your mom would rather have you in the streets. My mom, if my mom loved me, she would throw me into the streets. If my but mom ima- didn't, but, she but would- Imagine your, how mad your mom would be if she heard this deal. Oh, we saw Roberto. We saw Butch. <laughs> One day, where the fuck you saw Butch? He's living over there. Remember that 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 uh, that, guy, that that white man nobody likes. And he has a chicken coop. Well, Bush lives there now. Yeah, yeah. Kill me, bro. Kill me. He's living with that guy that says, oh, "I saw uh, uh, Arrowhead over there by that mountain over there by that mountain over there." <laughs> During Napoleon Dynamite. During Napoleon Dynamite, they like. I saw an Arrow, bro. I subtitled that shit. They still don't know what the fuck he said. Did you send me the clip? Or maybe I saw it on my own, where the director talks about that scene, and it was totally, they were on a break, but the cameras were still rolling. And he's like, oh, that's Dale. He's a local. We had him in the video because he was advising, kind of, or something like that. And they were taking a lunch break. And that fool's talking about finding (laughs) uh, a, a, a Native American real arrowhead. On the yeah. ground way over there. Yeah, he said they just they just put it in there. I saw a fun uh uh what you call Cherokee or Arrowhead or in that scene he's funny. 
But imagine seeing that guy in the middle of the night at a farm or like on the side of the road. Like that dude looks so inbred and so backwards, man. Like he's a creepy looking guy. I thought probably pick you up and go in going my way. That's a house of a thousand corpses looking motherfucker right there, dude. Like without a doubt, that's a house of a thousand corpses looking motherfucker. I don't know how we got into Odessa, but that's my story. Yeah, that's a good story, bro. That was like, cause we, you know what I liked about it is like, you know when you finish a, like a movie's over, and during the credits they're like, so and so got twenty years in prison. This person did that. You did all that, dude. You gave us like the really. That's funny though, man. Should have been a chicken coop. That's so. The chicken coop was the fucking cherry on the fucking. Uh, Top, bro. That was wonderful. Oh. She thought she was all badass. Dude. That's so funny because um, I remember doing, like, I just, because, like, when you tell these stories about these people that you meet uh, in these places, because they're not anywhere near the experiences we have now or that I have with you, uh, we meet people, but we, we don't really hang out or go too far out anymore. Um, but I remember being with George Perez. And George Perez would hang out with anybody that wanted to hang out. Sometimes I, that's fucking how we ended up with fucking Birdman. And fucking we would hang out and like, fuck, I'd be like, dude, this place is fuck. I think this, I don't know if we're safe, you know? And like, uh, it kind of taught me in comedy to like, just kind of go out and do stuff and run into funny shit like that. But that bro, was so good, bro. One time we were in Houston, Texas. We we're doing the Houston Improv. Me and Rodrigo, it was like a two-nighter or one-nighter. We had some, I don't know if we had Louis, but we had some good shit, right? And we're, that's when, um, we were staying across the street from the improv, like the improv's right here. Right. There's a highway in this hotel, the Ritz Carlton. Yeah. We're staying there. And we went outside to smoke, but there was a man over there smoking already, bro. And he was wearing, he had, he was wearing Birkenstocks, but the, but the, uh, but the ones that look, that, the ones that douchey ass hippies wear, bro, with a little Velcro strap. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're more for fucking. They look like Jesus Christ. They're like Tevas. Or without something. the miracles and and the and the and the and the humbleness. <laughs> without the miracles and the humbleness. You know, and the yeah, meekness. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. He was wearing those. <coughs> they look brand new. His feet look like. That was the first time they've been out uh, out in the open, bro, ever. Like, th those feet look like... They were, like, finally those, getting some air and sunshine. Those feet look like Ugh. he gets home, he takes his socks off, and he don't um, put on... He don't Ugh. he don't walk around... He don't put on another pair, new pair of those socks for the next day, and those feet never go out in the sun, never oh, just stay so in the gross. house. That's they were so They were gnarly, bro. paley white, his feet, and his legs were all pale, pasty white. And he's smoking a joint, bro. Almost, the most. Like, if you were to smoke that weed, and they would have hung you upside down for five minutes, and then put you back down, that weed will kill the de dizziness, bro. <laughs> That's how bad that weed like was. Like it would sober you up. That's how bad that weed was, bro. <laughs> that weed had a bird beak in it, bro, or something. <laughs> Like every time you smoke that weed, bro, you could you could see all the in the smoke all the pies that were murdered to That's make this weed. That's fucking funny, dude. You could see all the bribes. <laughs> That it took to confiscate that horrible weed to America. Oh, uh, that's that's some of that shit is so nasty. I remember getting so, like gas can weed when I was so younger. He smelled our shit. That's some good stuff. Yeah. So he I said, Come on over here, man. He looked like Jimmy that that guy, Jimmy Baker, bro, the, the guy that stole money from the from oh, the so Christian he's like channel. Old, like, white man. Yeah, he looked like Jimmy I Baker, right? Is white man. James Baker? Yeah, I know exactly who Jimmy Baker is. Yeah, he looked exactly like him, bro. He had hair to the side like this, like Paulo Francisco. Okay. And uh, Chris Estrada and Rodrigo Torres. But he more like, he more like Bob's big boy. And um Yeah, Rodrigo Torres has the more like the Bob's big boy, like, yeah. like swoop, the flow. Chris Estrada looks more like pre Rodrigo, like Rodrigo was in to sixth grade. <laughs> But um, so we we give that for a joint. This motherfucker starts coughing, bro. Like he's about to die. Yeah. And I said, "Oh shit!" 
And he goes, man, that's some good stuff, bro. I folded his head for him. His head went back, dog. Oh, wow. I said, bro, and I want to tell him, bro, you were smoking tree bark, bro. Yeah, dude. You're not. You were smoking weed that's not even good enough to be called oregano. Yeah. So, fuck. So, this fucking, uh, then Rodrigo looks at me, bro. We never said nothing about him. He's holding a big ass bag unopened of fucking pretzels with that lavender pretzels. So I don't know what flavor that is when it's purple. Lavender. Pretzels. Blueberries, probably. Oh, blue. Oh, the like the co- the like the. They're coated with blueberry. The yogurt coating on yeah, them. Yeah, that yogurt coating of oh, blueberry. Oh yeah, those or, are so fucking so, good. Exactly right. Yeah. So this motherfucker smoked the joint with us. And then Rodrigo said, that motherfucker didn't even offer, those, offer them pretzels. <laughs> he would not. Don't take this, dude. When you described the feet for me. And it was, it was not even open yet, right? Yeah. But, the, you, know, yeah. but you know, he, like, he was about to open it, but he saw my fat ass probably. Right. He goes, man. That, but then Rodrigo said, man, fucking serial killer. <laughs> he was just probably finished killing five bitches. <laughs> and got this fucking lavender, delicious Blueberry or raspberry covered yogurt. He described the 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 chips better than describe that fool's feet. Ah, oh, he God. didn't even offer us none. And we always talk about that that killer, bro. Like he never offered us any yo any pretzels. <laughs> fucking Rodrigo just wanted the fucking yogurt covered pretzels, dude. That's all it was his, in his mind. Motherfucker, dude. But I, I thought I thought that guy was a serial killer, bro. He had everything like a serial killer. Did you think that? Like, that's the thing. Too. Oh, he had glasses too, like Jeffrey Dahmer, bro. Uh, I I run across those guys all the time, and I'm like fucking serial. Killer. Yeah, but it's Johnny Roque. Johnny Roque is a very nice guy. He could pass as a serial killer. Oh, you guys are probably wondering what is this, Felipe? I'll tell you guys. Look. There you go. Thank you, Vince Scully. Thank you, Vince Scully. Goes from the past. There it is. Thanks to Vince Scully. So you're talking about marijuana, bro. Yeah, I wanted to do, you know, just because we didn't do get to do 420. We missed it. We missed it. I was, in, I, I was in Chicago hitting yeah. dabs. I wanted to do something special for 420. I thought, like, you know, weed is <laughs> such a, like, way overcovered subject right now. And we we know a lot of the history about it, and we know things. So I wanted to do different things that maybe we never thought about with its history. That's funny you say about weed history, and I remember that I, I did see that movie, Reefer Madness. Yes. And I did read the book, Reefer Madness. Okay. And I remember reading Reefer Madness, and I remember reading that back then, you know, when um, it was really, really, not in the beginning, this is like before they started legalizing marijuana, right? It's like the 80s, 90s. So the book starts off in recent times at a farm somewhere in the Midwest that's growing marijuana illegally, like illegally, but it's growing marijuana. And and I thought it was genius the way they were doing it. And I remember right now because they were growing regular corn stock, you know, because they they have, um, they're being sub, what's that word, subsidized? Uh, sub, sub, subsidized? They're being subsidized by the, by the government to grow corn because, you know, they, they buy the seeds off the government. Right. They, they lease the land off the government. You know, they probably, and then when they're done, they probably have enough, barely have enough money, and now the government says, you're going to use the new tractors now. So they have to buy the government. They have to buy that tractor now. Yeah. So they keep getting it's into debt, and the, the farmer is losing out in this end. That's, that's how they get you, man. That's how they get the farmer's. You probably say, "Oh, but that farmer gets welfare." Yeah, but it's not a lot. It's not a. It's like the equivalent of well. It might they might give them thousands and ten thousands to a farmer, but it's not. It's the equivalent of me getting eight hundred dollars a month. It's kind of like because he did. has to pay for his tractor. He has to pay for the seeds, the deed for the land. If this fucker has bad crop, he starves. Right. So, what the farmers in Iowa they started doing that in the eighties. And then when weed was getting popular, they started putting marijuana plants right next to the corn. Okay. So the and then when 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 the marijuana would start growing, the fucking corn would start growing too, and it covers up the fucking it, fuck, covers, up it, the it weed. covers up marijuana right from the from the fucking anybody who's looking for that wants to be nosy. Totally, totally. And then of course um, 
they, they, that, that's how they were getting away with it. That's how so, a lot um, of these farmers in the Midwest were sustaining a life, bro, which is crazy, huh? And to they be, were growing weed to smoke or for like to hemp sell. use? To sell weed. To sell, like, bro. This is like during, to what, smoke. Do you remember what like period of time? It was probably the, those times, bro, when it was in the 90s, dude. I think the book started off in the 90s, like, I think. Like 90s, 1990s. 1990s. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking like the fucking 30s. Well, they were doing it in the 30s too, but they, the guy was just explaining it. Ah, uh, I, see, I never watched any of the Reefer Madness stuff. It and starts off, Reefer Madness starts off with uh, exploitation films about a, a guy with smoking a joint. It starts off with a guy smoking a joint and he's laughing real hard at this. Then he go kill his wife. I did see a scene, something like that, where like they try to make their eyes red, but it's black and white. So it just makes their eyes dark, and they make it like they look insane. And it's like the 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 reefer drug, blah blah. blah. Yeah, but this film, uh, the one I just told you about, what, about the guy killing his wife, it was a short film, like a short before the real film. Right. Hey, if you know, if if you smoke marijuana, this this is a story that that happened, and they show that guy smoking a joint, all happy at first. Right. And they show like happiness at first, sleepy, boom. Yeah. Then you, then they, they, they get violent attack, and the guy show the gun. He skipped hunger, and, and, and he goes kill his wife. Oh yeah, hunger replaced by the gun, which is totally not true. But but, but back right. then, you know that they were selling it at like that, you know, because it was, it was, it was right because they were yeah. afraid of it, and just like everything else, bro. Like you know everything else that's new, bro. Whatever's new. White men will try to discredit it. Just like when they try to burn electricity. The first time they use electricity, oh, it'll burn the whole house down. You're going right. to get cancer. Yeah. Cell phones, oh, they catch cancer. We were talking about the radio before, too, and how, like, the, like it was like, oh, this is bad. It's like always propaganda on something that's new, always scary, always bad. But serial killers, we, we still haven't stopped them, man. No, fuck no. And that's the thing, but we're, you know, and that's the thing, man, is if you think about prohibition versus marijuana versus prohibition alcohol, once you start taking away things from white men, they like, whoa, wait a minute, dude, wait a minute. Marijuana makes you beat your wife. Alcohol just makes us kill them. Yeah. But we need our alcohol. You know, and it's like, dude, it's crazy to me how that, like, that whole thing went down. I mean, even in our lifetimes, like, marijuana was still very illegal. Like, it was still very illegal. Um, and I remember being a kid, but knowing that probably someday in my lifetime I would see I that. heard that um, from a comedian. Um, I met this comedian from a comedy store, and he was he did comedy with um, – he was a child actor, too. He, was a, he did comedy with Richard Pryor, and he said – he told me that he was one of the comedians that was there at the comedy store when it was Richard Pryor, Willie Nelson, Burt Reynolds – um, that lady in the, from that movie also can't think of her name right now. Gidget. Okay. Yeah, she's in it. They were all hanging out at the comedy store, hanging out partying. And um, he's told me the story. They were all smoking blood. They're all smoking pot too. Okay. And some director too was there. A big time director was there too. And they were all smoking pot, and it was illegal as fuck back then, brother. And they were um. That will, the smell will get them more in trouble, bro. They would look for the sm the smell or look for weed more than they would look for coke. He said that um that the guy who has that that um her the guy who who has the hair examiner her, it was a newspaper stand here in LA. Mm -hmm. He heard that they were gonna switch to marijuana paper, hemp. so he started wrote hemp. So for the he, the guy from the hair examiner, he fucking wrote. He owned a newspaper. How they're gonna replace hemp when they fool owns trees all over the world for that newspaper? Right. Where they made paper and yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So him and other paper companies, they got together and they they, they oh, started. Oh, you're talking a, about the guy who owns the mansion up in the hills, uh, in California. What's it called? Um, not Hearst Castle. Hearst didn't Hearst be the one to to uh, do that? No, the guy from Hero Examiner was the uh, newspaper guy, and okay. he he's the one that he had, he owned a newspaper. And he wrote a whole. Campaign about um, drugs is bad. Drugs oh, will kill yeah, you. Okay. Um, these immigrants from Mexico are bringing in marijuana to impregnate white women. Right. The jazz people they're using marijuana. Do Do, do you ever see the videos? The culture, culture, Rasa. Do you ever see the videos where these guys are like, 
fucking SJWs are trying to like get rid of the word was, marijuana was, because uh, it's racist. Was that SJW? Social justice warriors. Um, oh, yeah. Where they're trying to get rid of the word marijuana. It's like some Mexican guy, and he's Why? like. Because it's like a slander to Mexican people and Latin people, and that marijuana was made up by um, white culture to vilify Mexican people by calling it this. And it's like, I looked up the origins of of marijuana, marijuana, whatever you want to call it, um, and it's actually not at all close to that. Fucking mystery, to be honest with you. But they think the two biggest ones is that when Chinese people came through Mexico to come to the United States, they brought weed with them. That was the first introduction introduction to weed. And they have a word that's close to, it's called like May Juan. And, and Mexican people are Spaniards, I think. I can't remember who it was that first was around, just took it as ma- marijuana. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so that's where it came from. That's That's where they think it came from. But it wasn't like, ah, oh, we're going to name it this so they think it's Mexicans who made it up and they're making it and they're poisoning our people. It's like, that's not, that's a whole, I mean, white people are definitely fucking guilty of doing shit like that and just not with this fucking Let me tell you about why white people are, are badass, better than us. They know how to market shit. Fuck. Like, we're the ones that are going to, like, they started, sm- they started fucking locking up people, black people and Mexican for smoking weed. Fucking white people came out with a marijuana magazine. Hell yeah, dude. Um, History for Fools History right here, for 420. Um, in that movie, Reef for Madness, also, what they what they do in that movie, like they'll cut to a story, and then they'll go back to, like, 1985, and they'll tell you how much the the price of, um, the, the price for running the war on drugs has cost up to this point. Philip, look how much the pri- the war on drugs oh has cost up to up to this point, 2023. So every year they tell you 79, in 1979, the pri- the war on drugs has cost 100.5 million dollars. 11.2. Up to this million. point, so the war on drugs has cost 11.2 billion. Imagine how many people you can. How many people have been caught that with half of that, more than that? Let me just say this: If you took say it, bro, eleven point two fucking Put a billion, hat on him. and you fucking took it to all the bad neighborhoods, and put it into those schools, divided equally amongst those schools, you would not have to spend anywhere near eleven point eight billion fucking dollars to fucking fight a war that's never going to be won on a fucking thing that everybody wants to fucking do. Education is the fucking key. Stop fu- I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. No, I just feel like, dude, it's crazy to me that we spend $11.8 million in this fucking country, billion, and people are like, yeah, fuck drugs. How about fuck bad education? How about- Huh? Eight trillions. Trillions. You said trillions? Hold on, bro. The ice cream man outside. I know, bro. So, a uh, need for sewing thread. Yes, that's it. La, I uh, know to follow. So, do I think with <laughs> jam and bread oh, that man. will bring us back to do do a deer, a female do deer, Ray, a, a drop of golden, golden sand. Me, me myself, I call my myself. Oh, whatever, Ray. But, but, um, <laughs> And in that book, it also says that um, how much how much job was created to fucking have the war on drugs, DEA. That's crazy, dude. Um, I wonder how many lives it took. Like New York got tanks. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, and those aren't for white people, bro. Those are not for white people. Remember the bu- remember the battle ram? Yeah, 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 dude. I live when I lived in Morgan Hill. They had a fucking battle ram. They had a tank with a fucking fist on the end of it. It's like, what the fuck? You're Morgan Hill, bro. Morgan Hill's a small... Our battle ramen LA had the same fist as that little that little cone for afros. <laughs> uh, history for fools. You want some more history? Hey, man, but um, when you were a kid, right? Yeah. Like, because the war on drugs, I'm pretty sure all, a lot of that money also went for the D.A.R.E. program, you think, or none? None. Yeah, it did, but the D.A.R.E. program also was a fucking complete failure. I heard, all right, I heard, 
but I've I've seen shows where is this true? Is this a fact that when um whenever they do like they say they they go raid your house, right? Yeah. And they find half an ounce of coke, a pound of meth, five pounds of marijuana, um a kilo of coke, but they're all bagged up in little in little eight sure. balls. And they find two million dollars. Is that true that the cops keep the two million to, to buy new uniforms and to yes. buy new weapons, yeah. new guns? Yeah. Oh yeah. Why do they get to keep it? I can't remember the term for this. If you want to look it up, Philip, I, I but it's this it's it, and I think it's still something immunity or so, no, that's that's the protection for cops. But cop a cop could pull you over if you have a nice car and if he finds just a tiny bit of evidence that or he thinks that 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 you don't the car isn't yours he could take the car and then the fucking state absorbs it and sells it like it could happen at any time i can't remember exactly what the name of the the law was that allowed them to do that that's, how they, that's been, how they took my supra bro i don't know if it's how they still if it's still intact but i know like two years ago it was controversial like four years ago where it was like cops could just take whatever they want they keep it and then the government uh, absorbs it and mm. then uses the money. I know in San Jose, with all the drug raids they did during the crackdown on crack, they bought a helicopter uh, uh, for the city, and then the that one crashed. The second helicopter, I don't know if that's owned with drug money or regular city money, but I know the first one was drug money. When you were a kid, was marijuana totally illegal? Fuck yeah, bro! It was scary illegal, bro, where I lived in San Jose. Like illegal, but was there a spot to buy weed though? Uh, there used to be this place called the Leaps. The Leaps. And you go, you go, you you. Everybody knew that the Leap would never let you fucking sell, like would never let you use the bathroom. So you walk in, and there's a big sign that says, "No, you don't use, don't ask to use the bathroom or something." But you hit up the Leap, and if you were, if you knew the right way to ask them, yo, what's up, the Leap? Can I use the bathroom? Can I use the restroom or something like that? He went. You would go to the back, and his mom had like a bunch of little, like half ounces, quarter ounces, dime bags, and so she was like a little dispensary. Mm. That's a. I don't know. Like I only heard that because I wasn't cool with the leap. So, <laughs> did your gas station sell crack pipes undercover? Yeah, with a rose in it. I didn't know that was a rose, but I gave it to my lady one time. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 I didn't know the crack pipe first. Yeah, and I should just give it to myself for the future. <laughs> Here, future Felipe. But me, dude, like I like. It's funny when when you were like when you're part of that counterculture, you know, yeah. when you're part of the crack scene. It's like a whole different world opened up for you. Like you start seeing the evil. It's like you're wearing donkey ears, like in Pinocchio. Yeah. Like I used to go to that Chevron right there across the street from Rick's, not the seven, not the AM PM, uh -huh. but the Chevron, and I would go there. And like two in the morning, and I say, uh, "Give me a, give me some flower. I will give me um flowers. No, I, I I forgot what I would say. Right. But I, I would just say I would just I give him five bucks or four bucks, and in that bag, there was a lighter, a fucking fresh clean crack pipe, and Brillo pad ready to rock. Ah, so it was like the crack kit. Yeah, the crack kit, bro. Wow, and he had it ready to go. Yeah, but I think I would say flowers or give me a lighter and flowers. I don't what know. is the Brillo pad for? For, for? for the filter, bro. Okay. So you get the fil you get the the copper with the, the Brillo pad, which is the Brillo to clean pads. Yeah. Which is copper. You fucking get you get into a little ball. You get the lighter, and then you burn it, bro, to a silver because you you don't want that shit in your throat. Right. You're gonna have crack, you know, by the way. So. <laughs> So you burn that motherfucker off. Can't take off. the vaccine, You dog. burn it off, bro. You roll it up with a little ball, and then you fucking stick that shit in a crack pipe at the end. Yeah. And you stick it to the other side, bro. And then um, you warm it up, let it cool off and shit. Fuck. And then you fucking put a, you smash a little piece of crack right here, bro, and fucking let it sizzle, bro. <laughs> This is like Dexter's lab out in the street. <laughs> and you slowly go. <sighs> then you finish it off, bro, and then. <sighs> float, float on. And then you, you you hold it you hold it down like that, bro, because cause then the crack will start coming down your finger, burn your ass, 
So you gotta hold it gent like this, so right. you can go back into that Brillo pad. You just let it sit there. A lot of crackheads who are with money, which was me, I would just put another piece in there, bro. Fuck it, you know. Let's go. And let's go. But and I would just and I, when I was done, when I started feeling bad for it, I start crying again. <laughs> You loser. You're a horrible dad. You're a horrible dad. Start punching myself. That's what I do with comedy now. I would I would get I would throw it and then like sober up for about a month and then again go back at it. Right. But I remember um I was telling a story to a crackhead. He said, Mijo, you throw away a lot of good shit in that Brillo pad. <laughs> That's where that story caught him. Was that yeah. the Brillo pad? Yeah, yeah. He, he went like this. He didn't care about being a horrible dad. Yeah, he's like, he didn't care about none of that. He just went like this. Can you tell Mijo, me where you you the Brillo pad? But, I didn't know, right? But then I started hanging around with professional crackheads. And they told me, bro, that. Um, so after that, I would get. it. So so the the Brillo, this this black girl I used to hang around with, she used to push it to the other side. To the end. And then all the all, all the all the resin will push to the back. Right. And you get a full it's like it's like when you get the the weed from the pipe, a regular weed you pipe. Take the resin. Except the crack is much better, bro. It like it's real. It tastes delicious. It's like uh leaving the beans overnight. Bro, are you thinking about how am I going to rob somebody to get $20? Wow. Holy shit. Dude, I was sitting I was sitting like this. Like this, with my stomach like this, eight hours at a time, bro. <sighs> right? Crazy. That when I finally got up, I felt like I did the longest sit up. Yeah. So my stomach right here feels like I did sit ups all day. Oh, because you were sitting there like I was this. Sitting like that. Oh, I was my, wow. I didn't even think about that, dude. You're so into it. You don't even care about like your, the stress on it or anything. Yeah, man. It's like if you hold a position long enough and you're thinking about it, you're like, man, my leg hurts. You move your leg, but. Wow. So yeah, man, I was part of the war on drugs. I was not that I did coke for a while. I got pretty bad into it. Um, I was always afraid of the cops because I lived in Morgan Hill. I was always afraid of the cops pulling me over and searching the car. So I would take the vials of coke and I would put, put them in, in the butt. I'd put them in the fuse uh box. Genius. They don't know that. And my wife's car, right? And one day I went to pick took the vial out and it dropped out of my fingers into the engine bay. It's a brand new fucking car, bro. You're not supposed to, like, it had a warranty and everything. I took the fucking half the engine out to find the fucking vial of, crack, of, of coke. And that's when I was like, I should not do this anymore. So I quit after that. And I put her car back together. He, and she didn't know. I gave this crackhead money. And then he said he was going to go go fucking deliver some crack in, like, in, where I, in the valley somewhere and come back. So I just gave him my Volvo. That motherfucker did not come back, bro. With your Volvo? No, he crashed. Oh, no. He ended up in a hospital. And when I got to the hospital, I said, bro, where's the crack? <laughs> you know what? You know what my favorite story about that you've told me? One of them is? And he went like this, bro. <laughs> he was all bandaged up. He went like this. He still gave it to and you? I took it off his he hand. He knew what was up. I took it off the hand. I said, you know what, bro? I'm glad you're alive. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the car. <laughs> he was like holding like that. Bread, he didn't like, even like, give like, a fuck about the car, though. He was like this, like Rambo, bro, like in that scene. You know what my favorite? He opened up his hand, bro, and it was right there, bro. And I, and I grabbed it, bro. Right. I think I scratched his palm, bro, when I grabbed it. I don't know. Uh, one of the, this reminds me of the time you told me about when they played that prank on you. For the end of the world. Oh yeah. And so you you set this up, <laughs> and I know we have a video uh, somewhere somewhere of us doing it to Gabby, but it's this you put on this YouTube and it says alert alert. It's like it's like a like the test that you get. Yeah, we're, like, we're getting bombed by Korea. Yeah, and it was like and it's convincing, dude. It's for me it was uh, convincing. Uh, and so he showed me how they tricked a couple of people, and then he told me that they got him. But my favorite, because I I am so intrigued. I was so interested in what it is to feel like the end of the world is actually happening. Like I've never had that feeling. 
And so I asked you what you what your first thought was, and you asked him if you could keep the pound. <laughs> Gabby went to call to see if her cats were okay, and like, and and you were like the first thought in your head was like, I, I felt like this thing like the, the world gonna end, and I said, man, can I have a pound on the way out? This is my favorite thing about you, bro. Yeah. I love that because that's exactly what I would do. I was thinking probably they're gonna go in the car. <laughs> Smoke the fattest joint with all these zigzags. Yeah. And watch shit go down, bro. Yeah. That's exactly. And I probably would have ran off with it, actually, either, to be honest with you. I would have went straight to buy a bag of Doritos with nacho cheese, sour cream dip, the world's ending, fuck being vegan. And um, I would have got me a, two fucking Suzy Q's and real milk and just shit on myself when the world blew up. <laughs> like on execution. Unless I go drink on surviving, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm ready to die if there's an apocalypse, man. Yeah. History for fools next time, apocalypse. History for fools. What's up, man? I got I got a couple more things we could share if you want. We could... What do you got to share, bro? Tell us. I just wanted to, because it was, because again, I wanted to come up with things that we didn't really think about. So like, like you ever see the zigzag pack? Oh, yeah. What's up with him? I always, because we call him the zigzag man, right? Yeah. I thought it was, just a, I thought it was a guy shaving. He's he's called Le Zouave. And Le Zouave, Le Zouave. Le Zouave That's my new nickname. Uh, was a legendary warrior from the French North American Army who fought um, during the Ottoman Empire um, in Russia. And this particular battle was the Battle of Sebastopol in Ukraine. And and the legend is that he's fighting. Pat, pat. And you know how they had to like take paper, put fucking shit in it, and a ball, drop it down the, the top of the fucking barrel? Yeah. Well, he, re- his, he, was, shoot- he was fighting with his clay pipe. And he got shot in his pipe and it explodes. He had nothing to smoke with. So he took the paper from the ammunition and he rolled a cigarette with it. And and so that's how like they thought the lore of like cigarettes came or whatever. So the zigzag man is a he's actually a soldier. He's actually like what was considered an elite Les soldier Wah. at the time. Awesome. Uh, and then um Bongs. Yes. Have you ever wonder where Bongs came from? From the lab, right, scientists? No. Uh, where do you think uh, bongs? Where do you think like if bongs? Well, the the, the bong they look like a the, the the glass, right? Look like one of those liquid things that you see in a scientist lab. Totally, but remember the plastic ones before that, like when we were younger, the graphics bongs. Do you remember? Yeah. Those? Okay, so bongs are historical as fuck, dude. They've been around for thousands of years. Were original hookahs. This is like my favorite thing that I looked up. What? Um, no, hookahs are different, and those came from like the Middle East. Bongs were a product of <laughs> Bongs were a product came from Thailand. Um and they think like the term came from Buong, um uh which was which was a Thai word for uh uh uh, uh, uh bamboo. Now the thing with the with the bongs is actually they found the oldest artifact for weed they found was two bongs in a Scythian uh, burial ground, which is like early, early, early fucking um, uh, kind of like Mongolians. And so it was them that turned into Mongolians and Mongolians spread weed everywhere. And that's where we get weed uh, from is those guys. So that's, there it is. There's there's all your information. Les Wav. Les Wav. History for fools, man. You guys know that? Who else going to teach you that? Give us some suggestions, guys. I know some of you do have suggestions, and I read some of them. Um, I'd like to know more. I'd like to hear more. Well, man, we'll be, back, we'll be right back with another History for Fools podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, like I told you, wherever you go. Also, um, you know who told me about when they when they raided that club in Odessa? Who told me about it? Who? That comedian, April Macy. Oh, really? Because she had just done that club. Red-haired chick. Yeah, and then when she went home... She goes, Felipe, we're at the airport together. Felipe, they raided that club. Which one? Wow. Wild Wild West. Wow. History for food. See you guys next time.